YouTube, what's going on? It's your boy back again, Dominic Arena, with the DGA Live. We are going to talk, we're going to dig deep, we're going to talk about the Evercade handheld retro gaming device. Um, we're going to talk pros, we're going to talk cons, we're going to talk everything about it, who this unit might be for, and just dive a little bit deeper into... Uh, into this retro gaming handheld. So, uh, as always, man, this is DGA Live. This is unscripted. Just uh, uh, talk about everything, pop culture, um, reviews, the whole nine yards. So make sure, before we get any further, man, hit that subscribe button. Hit that thumbs up. Helps me grow a lot. I really, really appreciate it. And without further ado, man, let's talk about the Evercade handheld. So, this just came out in May of this year, 2020. So, this has only been out for a few months now. And uh, I believe Evercade is a UK company. If I'm wrong, correct me in the comments. But I believe they're based out of the UK. And uh, I'm really liking this unit a lot. I don't have really anything negative to say i will point out a little bit some 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 cons i'll point out to you guys but uh, for the most part this is a great retro handheld device now i will say evercade kind of caters to the old school retro gamer okay and i'll, I'll show i'll tell you why um if you're in your late 30s or your 40s like me um, you probably grew up on Atari, the NES, the Sega Genesis, those consoles, right? Um, cartridge consoles, D pads. There was no joy. There was no thumbsticks back then. <clears throat> Everything was physical media, and uh, you know, physical cartridges, the whole nine yards. That is starting to die. That trend is starting to die. So unless you're old school like me, I prefer physical media even today. Whether it's on the Xbox, the Nintendo Switch, the whole nine yards. A lot of people nowadays are more for the convenience of digital download. They want a unit that already has everything built into it. They want a unit where they could just download the game and call it a day. And not have to go to the store and buy physical media. Or have the physical media with them in order to play. I'm the opposite. I'm old school. I like having this. And this company caters to that person, which is a breath of fresh air in, in, in my eyes. I love that. So this little unit is not like your typical emulation units that there's a ton of Chinese brands that are doing units like this that have 4,000 ROMs built in. Okay, a lot of bootleg stuff. This only plays physical media. So on the back, you'll see that it takes a cartridge. I have the uh, Atari cartridge in it now. This is what the cartridges look like. They're very reminiscent of like a Game Boy Advance cartridge. Now, Game Boy Advance cartridges will not fit in these, just so you know. This is proprietary. So there it is without of it. And you can see it's got a nice like galvanized steel uh, chassis. You know, just another thing to pay attention to is the build quality. But this is the cartridge, right? So here's the Atari Collection 1, right? It's a chipped cartridge, very you know reminiscent of the old uh, Nintendo cartridges. And uh, this is what this unit plays, right? So one thing I, I'm going to say before we go into the unit, let's kind of talk about what Evercade did. Is they did something along the lines of Sega Genesis. They actually give you a nice collectible hard clamshell case for the games. Now this Atari game uh, cartridge comes with 20 games preloaded in it. Cartridges from Evercade run about 20 bucks depending on what collection you get. Okay, I think the most expensive cartridge I've seen from them is 30. That's US. 99% um, of their cartridges are 1999 US. And uh, it's going to vary on how many games come out on it. Atari games are, two, are super small files. You're able to get 20 on this cartridge, right? And all that right there. So nice hard shell clam, uh, clamshell case. It's got a spot for the cartridge. And look at this, manuals. You remember that, guys? Full color manuals. Just to kind of give you a sneak peek on it. This is awesome. Most people are going to overlook this. 
When's the last time you got a manual with a video game? I love this attention to detail. Very, very, very collectible. Um, just to show you another one, kind of prove my point. This is the Data East collection. This has 10 games on it, right? A little bit bigger games, more NES style. And then we get to Interplay, which this even has bigger games, right? Clay Fighter and Earthworm Jim, you know, you're jumping up to that 16-bit uh, style games. Only fit six on this cartridge. It's awesome. I love it. Just to kind of give you an idea, there's a ton of cartridges coming out. So I have to hand it to Evercade for that. Because even though this uh, this unit has only been in the U.S. now for about five, six months, they're constantly coming out with new games. This wasn't a one-time deal like, here's all our games, collect them, and then forget about the unit. They're working on new stuff. They got an indie games collection coming out. They got two Namco cartridges. They have... Um, um, even Xeno Crisis made it on a cartridge, which I was shocked to see that. <clears throat> so, yeah, there's the games. Super, super collectible. And then, um, as you can see, once the game cartridge is in, it sits nice and flush in the unit. You kind of leave it in and forget about it. Now, the unit is a little on the thick side, as you can see. It's about, eh... I'd say it's about as thick as a Nintendo DS with the the clamshell closed. So we got our volume rocker up and down. We got headphones. It is rechargeable. I'm trying to get this to focus. It is um, micro USB. The battery life on this is about four to five hours. So about typical of a Nintendo Switch Lite. You're gonna get about the same. The uh, screen is a 4.3 inch screen, if I remember correctly. You got your uh, power on and off. And then we're going to talk about this. This is micro HDMI out. Yes, this can be connected to a TV. This is a super cool feature. I'm glad they included it. Now, I will say I wish that was type C, but I get why they did that for, uh, they did it for cost. This was type C that would be able to charge it and then also send the signal out to the television or monitor. That would have been great, but you will have to get yourself a micro HDMI to full size HDMI in order to uh, connect it to the TV. It is not included with the unit. Um, it do they do include a power cable or micro USB to charge it. Uh, headphone jack, all that good stuff. So when we power it on, you're going to get a uh, little Evercade boot up screen. You'll see that here in a second. I'm covering the speaker. And then whatever cartridge you have in it will boot up automatically. Boom. So I got the Atari cartridge in it right now. And, uh, of course, I got 20 Atari games. Some of them are uh, 2600s. Uh, there's a 7800 game right there. Um, no arcade ports on this particular package. There's another 7800 game. Um, but there's 20 Atari games on this. We do have a battery indicator right here. Now, one of the features that I love is if you go to the menu, you can change the screen ratio. So most of these old school games, especially the 8-bit and 16-bit games, they're in a 4x3 format. That's very typical. So if you've ever played these games on a current 16x9 TV, you're going to notice the black bars on the side. You can stretch that. And I know that's a no-no to some purists. It's like you don't stretch those games. But I like the option in, to do it. So if you do want to play these on the TV and you want that full screen, you can do that. And it also play in full screen here. Because as you can see, this is in a widescreen format. So you could do that. You can adjust the brightness, all that good stuff. You turn that little beep off. Um, yeah, and then, you know, you just you get out of it. The, um, let's talk about the controls. So this is kind of a pro and a con to me at the same time. You will notice that the D-pad, right, is recessed. It's not, um, it's not into it. The, um, the D-pad is very reminiscent to me of the Sega Genesis D-pad. Uh... I wish it was more Nintendo. I'll be honest with you. I wish this was a typical 
Nintendo D-pad and not the circular um, Sega style. This is not a deal breaker for me, but I, that's just a preference thing. The D-pad's great. It's super responsive. You could roll on it. I love it. The buttons are set up in X input. This makes sense to me because of the way they're kind of going towards that Sega theme. So you get A, B, X, Y. This is the X input. This is something that you would find on any Microsoft device or Xbox. On the original Sega Genesis, if you remember, it was this D-pad, A, B, C. The reason why this is a little bit confusing is a lot of these games... Oh, auto shut off too. A lot of these games are Nintendo ports, which in Nintendo is B, A, Y, X. So you will find yourself once in a while clicking the wrong button because it is set up in X input. So that's kind of a con, but I get why they did it. I'm not, I'm not totally disappointed with that. It, it just makes sense to go with the X input in this D-pad. Speakers are front firing, and I will admit this is probably its cheapest thing. These speakers are pretty much garbage. They distort at full volume, and they're kind of crackly. Uh, me, personally, I like to play with headphones, so that bypasses that, and I'm a happy camper. So, you got to cut costs somewhere. Now, um, we do have bumpers. Let me see if I can get it to focus. The bumpers are great. You can Let's see if you can hear this. Oh, wait, hold on. Let me turn this off. Listen how tactile that is. They got a nice click. I hope the camera's picking that up. Very, very tactile. Buttons are great. These do not feel cheap at all. And then your D-pad. So build quality is great. It's got some weight to it. I got to admit, it's got a nice, a nice heft to it. Not cheap at all. The screen does have a plastic cover. I don't know if you could see that. This is a plastic cover. It's not glass. Um, so this can scratch fairly easy. So you definitely want to get yourself a case. I haven't got a case for it yet, but I did order an official Evercade case. It's got the branding on it that I probably, uh, I'm probably going to see this Monday. I'm going to wait for a case for it. Now, let's talk about the processor, and this is something I'm very happy with. The processor that's in this unit is the Cortex-A7. I'm so glad they went with that processor, even though it is sort of dated. A lot of emulators out there on the market, the cheap Chinese knockoff emulators, some of them look like Game Boys, all that stuff. They don't take physical media. They just have a ton of ROM stored into it. They're using the A5. The A5 is stupid cheap. It's very dated, but it's stupid cheap. Evercade could have easily went with that chi uh, that chipset. <clears throat> now they're both ARM processors, which is to be expected with a unit like this. I, I expected an ARM processor to be in it. Now Evercade could have went with the A5 and saved money, especially in a mass production. But they went with the A7, and the A7 is a great chip for this. This chip is, I think, 1.2 gigahertz, but it allows it to play bigger titles. And it's 20% more powerful than the A5 that you're finding in a lot of knockoffs. So big, big kudos to Evercade for going with the A7 and not skipping out and putting the the mass-produced A5. Now, the A7 is starting to get dated, but for these types of games, it's more than enough. It's more power than you need to run these 16-bit games and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm very happy with that. Um, so yeah, I think, I think I nailed everything I wanted to talk about. D-pad, button layout, processor, uh, game cartridges. There's a ton more on the way. Um, definitely give Evercade a follow um, on their Twitter page. They have an official Twitter account, and uh, they are very, very vocal and active with their community. They're not one of these companies that just post something, let everybody comment on it, and then they shut their mouths. They actually respond, and I have to give my hats off to that for listening to their public. the um, I've reached out to them a couple times, asking them about games, and rather than just brushing me off, they've actually came and told me, yes, we're working on that. 
No, we haven't got the licensing for that. I was waiting for a Konami collection. I want to see a Konami collection come out. They came out and they said, eh, not yet. We haven't got any licensing agreement. It's something in their books. Great. I love to hear that. You know, don't don't lie to me. Don't beat around the bush. Great company. Cost. Let's talk about that. This is super affordable. If you want to get just the Evercade by itself, it is $79.99 on Amazon right now. Um, that's U.S., and they're in stock. You're going to have it in a day or two with Prime. If you want to get the premium package, which is this, it comes with the Evercade and the Data East Interplay and Atari collection. This is $99. That is a great, great price. And then, of course, you can order more games, which, uh, which I'm planning on, too. I'm planning on getting a whole bunch more cartridges. Um, they got the Pico collection. They got... Uh, Worms, I think, is coming out. The Worms collection. The uh, I'm very excited about the indie collection. Uh, my boy John Rue's game, uh, Quest Rest, is going to be on that cartridge. That's super cool. Uh, yeah, great company to work for. I am very excited with it. I hope you guys dig it, too. Let me know. Do you have one yourself? What games have you got? What do you, what games should I check out? If, there's, um, if you guys have a cartridge that uh, I'm not aware about, and you're like, Dom, you got to check this out. Let me know, man. I'll pick it up, especially for 20 bucks. You can't go wrong. So that is the Evercade Retro uh, Gaming Console. Um, available on Amazon. You could get it from, I uh, believe you could get it from their official website also. But uh, yeah, that's it, guys. Hit me up on Twitter. Hit me up on Instagram. I will put my handles in the description like always. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Until then... Peace and hair grease. We'll see ya. Bye.